Okay, now with the clutch system fully bled, we move on to the brake system. And the first line we run is the longest line of the two, and that runs from the clake underneath. So we remove the blanking plug, and the next line runs from there all the way down to the rear caliper. Okay, the next stage is we remove the standard brake line from the master cylinder to the caliper, which we don't use. When removing the line, I find it best to remove the line from the master cylinder first, then lower it into a drip tray. This way, when you remove the banjo bolt from the actual caliper, the fluid tends to run down the line, thus getting less fluid around the brake. Be care very careful not to ha allow any brake fluid onto the pads themselves, or they'll need to be replaced. So I place a rag underneath there before I crack open the bolt. With the dual control system clake, there are two lines supplied with your unit. One line, the shorter line, runs from the brake master cylinder back up to the clake unit. The second line that we're installing now is the longer line that runs from the clake all the way down to the brake caliper. Okay, firstly we hook the longer line which goes down to the caliper and up to the clake unit itself. This uses an 8mm banjo bolt. The first thing we do is put one sealing washer on one side of it, place it through the banjo fitting, place the other sealing washer on, and then this connects to the lowest port. When installing this line, be very careful to make sure that the fitting itself is not touching part of the body before you tighten it up. And we just tighten that up. Before feeding the line down through the bike, I recommend that you wrap the fitting with Teflon tape to prevent any foreign material being forced into the fitting. On most motorcycles, the brake line goes down the right hand side of the bike. So we just feed it through. In this case, we can use the standard guide that's there for the throttle cables. On most motorcycles also you can, there's enough room to feed it between the frame and the radiator and you just simply feed it down through like that. And here we just feed the line down through. Most important thing is to make sure that it stays away from the exhaust system. So we'll cable tie that in place later and also that it can't go into the spring area. So we'll place a cable tie on that. Using the original banjo bolt, we place one of the supplied sealing washers, a new washer, over that side, place the banjo bolt through the banjo fitting, another sealing washer underneath, and then install the line. Next we install the line that runs from the brake master cylinder up to the clake. Again we use the standard banjo bolt, we place a new sealing washer over that, through the banjo, another new sealing washer, then we install the fitting. Now we tighten the line up. Again, we'll wrap Teflon tape around the fitting to prevent any dirt or contaminants being forced up when we run the line up.
And now we feed the line through. Again, we'll be cable tying the line away so that it can't contact the exhaust system. Okay, and we pull the line through and we just run this line in exactly the same position as the other line. Sometimes it helps to loosen the radiator. You don't have to remove any of the hoses, just to allow you enough clearance to run the lines through. Again, we just follow the original line and holder through the right-hand side of the motorcycle. Now we connect the uh, line from the master cylinder to the Clake slave cylinder. When we do this we make sure the orientation of the line is correct with the actual mounting of the slave so as not to put a twist in the line itself. Next we take out the bleed screw for the slave cylinder. Be careful not to lose the sealing washer. Now we remove the reservoir lid off the master cylinder. Now be careful that you place this on a clean surface, preferably upside down. Okay, with the slave cylinder in a vertical position so that the bleed port's at the top, you depress the brake pedal, then seal over the port with your finger, then release the brake pedal. Then depress the brake pedal again, fully down, release your finger, then seal it over again, and release it again. And just continue this operation until the fluid starts to come up. It's very important that if you have any spills, that you wipe them up immediately. Okay, you see there, <coughs> all the air's just about out. We'll just seal that up once more, release the brake pedal, and we'll carefully pump it down so that the fluid's not sprayed everywhere. And you can see the air being forced out of there. Okay, and we'll carefully wipe that up. Now, it's important to keep pressure on the pedal. Just keep it constant so that the fluid level doesn't drop and then replace the bleed screw. And you tighten the bleed screw. Wipe up any spills. And now, when we release the brake pedal, we should be able to look at the end and watch the plunger come out as we depress the pedal. Okay, now we move on to bleeding the main brake system. So we remove the front or forward reservoir, which is the brake reservoir. And again, be careful. Place it upside down on a clean surface. Then we fold the lever outwards. Two clicks, the first click takes off the clutch cam, the second takes off the brake arm, which is this black arm here. We fill the reservoir up for all the brake fluid and today we're using a power bleeder, vacuum assisted power bleeder. And we close off the bleeding valve. Okay, with the bleeder shut, we now pull the brake lever in and see if we've got any brake pressure, which we haven't at this stage. And what I do is angle the handlebars down on the left hand side so that they're lower than the right hand side. Then fold the lever outwards. 
and again two clicks to get the brake arm off and then we push that back in there and you can see the air bubbles coming out it's just air trapped in the top of the cylinder just keep repeating that until you can no longer see any air being forced upwards Fold it in. Uh -huh. We're starting to get a bit of brake pressure there. Pull it in hard, let it out. See it, some more air is coming out. Again, we'll fold it out the two clicks. If you still can't get all the air out, it sometimes helps if you fold the lever right out and remove the forward bleed screw for the brake system. This is a 3mm Allen key. Okay, we take this out and then you can see the fluid rising up and if there's any air trapped under that, that'll get rid of it. Just wipe it a couple of times just to see if there's any air bubbles coming up. No, and then we replace the bleed screw. And tighten it firmly. And we fold the lever back in. Just watch out for that when it pushes up. Watch, notice it sprays up the top and that's why we must wear safety glasses when we're doing this. Okay. Sometimes you can still get small pockets of air trapped. And another technique of getting this, this trapped air out is if you fold the lever out and again carefully and sometimes I'll actually place the rag over the top while I do it to stop that spray that happens. Okay, with the lever folded out two clicks so the brake arm's out we then go down and note the fluid level is quite low here and what we do is we carefully press inwards on the caliper and what that does is push the piston inwards on a sliding caliper setup this will only work on a sliding pin caliper as in when it has one or two pistons on one side which most dirt bikes employ okay and as we do that if you look up in the top of the reservoir, you should see a rising plume of brake fluid. Now, if you push too hard, it'll just squirt up and go up over the top and make a horrible mess. So the trick is not to push too hard. Okay, then what we do is we just we put it in one click, okay, and then just gradually, slowly, a little bit at a time, push the piston back on the caliper and that stops the air being forced back down the line too far. Just keep doing that until you've got some brake pressure. Okay, we've got some reasonable brake pressure there. Then we Fold it out again, and we'll place the rag over there to stop any spray. And we repeat this procedure. And you might need to repeat this, say, four times. Again, there's gentle pressure there, and you should be able to see a nice steady plume through the port. Okay, that's bottomed. Okay, now we top the fluid up till it's approximately 4mm from the top. Okay. And then we carefully return the reservoir lid. And 
I like to fill these up so that they're overflowing so it pays to have a, a rag on hand or something that's very absorbent and just put it around the reservoir to catch any overflow like that and then you do these up firmly but not too tightly and then the only thing that remains is to be return the backstop for the clake 2